Hello, welcome to the Hereford Faith and Life Church Weekend Message. I'm Pro Jerome, sitting for Pastor Bill Thomas. We're gonna pray for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to open open up our hearts and reveal the hidden meanings of His Word to us. So He's a blessing to all who are listening, hearing, and doing this message. Thank you. Amen. Uh, we're going to read from Romans 12, 2, and do not con conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In a dark of a night, navigating your way around furniture in a dark room and trying to be as quiet as possible. If you have ever stepped barefoot on a Lego brick, you have probably loudly and spontaneously uttered these words. Thank you, Mr. Hyatt. Well, perhaps not those words, but if you did, of course, that makes perfect sense. You see, American inventors, the Hyatt brothers, created the first injection molding process when they successfully squeezed molten plastic into a mold and hardened it. But what is molding? Some might ask. It is the process of making malleable materials conform to a desired shape. This process hardens not only physical materials like plastics, but it also works with a spiritual material like us. That is why some Bible translations like the Ivy Phillips New Testament write Romans 12 to this way. Don't let the world around you squeeze you into its own mold. Before coming to Christ, our mind is molded to the shape of this present age. A world that sells evil as good, knows no true love, wrong as right, and lies as truth. A world that knows neither mercy nor forgiveness. The only chance it gives is assured destruction of mind, body, and soul. That realization, coupled with the discovery of own parts, of all that, that through our own sinfulness, sinfulness can lead us to a step one of the process. Believing and receiving Jesus Christ as our Redeemer and Savior. But that is just the door opening on a much larger journey. The twisting, turning, often difficult path to becoming more like Christ, renewing our minds, our thoughts, our perspectives, and our desires into a Christ-like mind is the doorway to enter into the knowledge of trusting, believing, and accepting God's will for our lives. But picking up our cross and following Jesus is a lifelong endeavor, and it involves a lot of humility, a lot of trust, and obedience. Rejecting the ways of this world and accepting Jesus' light yoke takes a lot of humility. Any sort of permanent transformation takes the kind of discipline and self-control that pride will not permit. It is easy enough to give our lives to Jesus, but so much harder to resist taking it back, and trying to run our lives our own way again. Lasting transformation comes when we are humble enough 
to accept that we do not have all the answers, but that we need to change our patterns and habits. And rejecting the mold of this world requires a lot of transformation. Being born again and becoming a new person in Christ does not magically change the world, but it should change how we see and experience the world. Philippians 4, 7 through 8 says it this way. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This may take a radical change in our outlook if it has been negative or critical. It might require giving up perhaps some friends or even family, or the very least stopping them before they start gossip, criticism, political thought, talks, or other dangerous conversations. Going deeper, it may mean filtering the news, giving up certain shows and movies and other entertainment or activities. But it goes much deeper and further, perhaps the epitome of transformation and humility is the Apostle Paul. He started life full of status, a Roman citizen, a learned Jew who has studied under the famous rabbi and eventually the chief persecutor of Christians. But he lost his sight and much of his pride after being knocked off that donkey on the way to Damascus. From Acts through the epistles for, and or letters, we witness his transformation into a humble follower of Christ, evangelist, and church planter. In Philippians 3, 5 through 6, Paul recounts his spotless pedigree as a zealot, the height of his status in Jerusalem, but then follows with this statement in verses 7 and 8. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider, consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. He gave up everything to pursue his new life in Christ. Certainly, God gifts us all with talents and abilities, and surely he wants us to be able to take care of ourselves and our families. But notice how all of Paul's talents and training were exactly what was needed for his new mission. All of that training in Jewish law, the persuasive speaking, the zeal, the Roman citizenship, were all redirected towards God's purposes for Paul in Christ. Taking up our cross to follow Jesus may require a career change. Perhaps you will be called to lay down your teaching career to be a missionary or pastor. Your degrees 
will be repurposed toward directing a nonprofit. Perhaps you will be nudged to give up some worldly comfort to downsize your life or stay home to raise a family. Perhaps a part-time hobby or other talent can be dedicated to the Lord in service or sacrifice. All kinds of talents and skills are needed in the body of Christ. From musicians to counselors to accountants, custodians, and much, much more. Find your calling, brothers and sisters. Find your calling or your niche and find a way to do it. Paul did not wait for the apostles in Jerusalem to appoint him to preach to the Gentiles. In fact, they had no idea of his calling and they would have been more than a little hesitant to perhaps support him. But he was sent by Christ and so are you. So don't wait for someone to tap you on the shoulder and ask you to lead the mission committee or start a new ministry or outreach. If you feel the call by the Holy Spirit and you have the passion and dedication to do it, you tap the church on the shoulder and talk about the way to make it happen. That is the history of many successful ministries and missions here at the Hereford Faith and Life Church. From the food bank, to the basketball, to King's Cafe, and many others. This whole idea is stated perfectly by Jesus himself in Mark 8, 34 through 38. And leads right into the next point. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit, forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. So, Christian transformation also requires us to be bold in our faith. And while that does not require shadowing from the rooftops, it does require the courage to publicly proclaim that Christ is our Lord and our Savior. 2 Timothy 1 through 8 says, So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. There are no undercover agents in the Lord's army. We must be courageous enough to endure any snide comments, rejection, or persecution that may and probably will come to us when we share our belief in God and the risen Christ. And what can be more loving than that? God has given us a unique witness to the power and love of Christ in our lives. It may be the story of how you first came to him and were saved, or it might be how Christ helped you overcome some deeply rooted sin in your life or let go of some entrenched bitterness, or healed a broken marriage, or how he answered the prayer with a supernatural healing, or miraculous provision in your life, or the life of a loved one that you were praying for. 
The historical Jesus can be studied and analyzed and criticized, but your personal experiences of the risen Savior and the passion of your belief are powerful witness to the truth. People may scoff or dismiss your story, but it will plant a seed in their soul. And that seed of faith was at sometime planted in all of our souls. The renewing of our mind and the spirit is reflected in the fruits of the spirit, which would begin to ripen in our lives as evidence of the transformation that is occurring. Colossians 5, 22 through 23 says it this way, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Philippians 1.11 puts it this way. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God for all those who believe in the principle of show, don't tell, a righteous character may be even more powerful than your witness story. How unworldly and different is it in today's culture to live a life of integrity where you practice what you preach and live out the principles of righteousness day by day, even when it is hard and inconvenient, even when the world declares that sin is acceptable, even when others are watching, even the consequences of doing the right thing will be difficult to bear. That is what it means to be in the world, but not of the world. It means plain life by God's rules, not the ever shifting rules and values and exceptions that this world presents daily. Okay. But transformation is hard and it it's often two steps forward and one step back. For maybe more than one. What then? What about when integrity falters? What about when we fail the mission? Remember, God is the God of the second chances and third and fourth and fifth and go and so forth and so on. Consider Jonah. In Jonah 3, 1 through 2, we read, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go, Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. Then what happened? Jonah willfully went to the exact opposite direction from where God told him to go. After getting thrown overboard in the stormy seas, getting swallowed up by the great fish, and wallowing in his darkness, misery, pain, agony, and regret, Jonah probably thought that he would never get out of his misery alive. And that certainly God would never use him again. But God gave Jonah a second chance and certainly did use him to bring salvation and revival to the people of that great nation. The Bible is about the second chances God gives for all those who repent and return to him. This world and its prince, Satan, seek to deceive, devour, and destroy you. God gives us his truth, love, and salvation 
so we may have life and have it abundantly. God gave a second chance to Moses, who had killed an Egyptian, to David, who had committed adultery, and to Peter, who had denied Jesus. Our God is a God of love, mercy, compassion, and second chances. Our God is a God who was willing to sacrifice his only son to bring us into a relationship with him. Our God is a God who looks at our broken hearts, shattered integrity, stubborn willfulness, and yet loves us too much to leave, leave us. He made a way for his own Holy Spirit to come and dwell within us so that he could transform us from the inside out. So what is our defense against being molded into this warped and crooked world's image? God tells us that it is by renewing our minds by letting him remold our minds from within to rediscover the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, brothers and sisters. May God bless you, keep you, and shine his face upon you. Go in peace and be the hands and feet of Christ. Thank you.
rescue me.